Welcome to the RPC Church Podcast. We are so excited for you to listen along and hear this week's message. We pray that it inspires and motivates you and draws you closer to Jesus. Now, let's take a listen. Welcome to Richmond Pentecostal Church. Great to have you here with us today. And happy Father's Day. Great to celebrate with you today. Today's Father's Day. I'm very, very blessed to be a dad. And this morning, my oldest daughter gave me a a Peppa Pig pin. (laughs) It says, best daddy ever. So I'm wearing that today very proudly and, and glad to wear that. And great to celebrate Father's Day. So, Oriana, thank you. I love you. And thank you for thinking that I'm the best daddy ever. Really appreciate it. It's great to gather with you. And as we do so, we're continuing our June teaching series titled Focusing on the World. And the spirit behind this series is that we would look beyond our own borders, look beyond our own shores. And we've done this before as a church because we, we, we know that as a church we need to emphasize mission. But what we've really wanted to do through this series is to take to heart the priority that we've identified, which is to have a, a, a focus on the world as a church, but also to look at the ways in which we as a church can be directly involved with what God is doing through his church around the world. So uh, we, we support mission work, and we're going to continue doing that. We want to even increase the, the extent to which we support mission work. And so that's one piece. But the, but the piece that we're talking about is how do we personally uh, sense that, that, that work that God's doing through his church around the world? How do we directly engage with that? Because quite often, you know, sometimes, sometimes we'll have missionaries come and speak to us, but apart from that, you know, you might not always know the things that are, that, that, that are taking place around the world. This has been an opportunity for us to, to really think about it. And uh, as we've seen throughout this series, we've even commissioned uh, a couple of mission trips already. I was very, very fortunate to be able to go to Nepal. Thank you for supporting me to be able to do that. And uh, as we began our chosen experience uh, last week, we commissioned Pastor Crystal to go to Guatemala and to represent our church to the communities that she was visiting. And Pastor Crystal has just returned from Guatemala. She got back yesterday, I think, in in the early hours. And so we welcome Pastor Crystal back. And she's here today. So if you see her today, say, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back, Pastor Crystal. I'll tell her that we did that. I don't think she can hear us right now because she's working with the kids right now, but I'll tell her we did that because I know it'll mean a lot to her. Uh, but if you have an opportunity, please do go and, 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 and just connect with Pastor Crystal and say, welcome back. How was your trip? Because I'm sure there's a lot of, of things that she wants to share with us. Next week, when we do the reveal of our chosen experience, we're going to hear from Pastor Crystal. You're going to hear from Pastor Crystal and, and some of the things that she saw and that she did in Guatemala. But this series is designed to stir our hearts and deepen our discipleship as we focus on missions and the transformative power of compassionate action and specifically our personal and direct involvement in mission as a church. And so uh, the last two weeks, as I mentioned, we've commissioned short-term missions trips. Today we're going to commission a third short-term mission trip. We're commissioning our youth ministry team as they go to serve at Camp Yukon. And as we conclude our message this morning, we're going to invite them up and we're going to commission our youth ministry mission team together. And I'll just share very, very quickly about what kind of things we're going to be doing at the end of our message today when we commission them. Throughout the series, we've been engaging with the stories of those that have been transformed by mission work and seeing how our church's actions can make a significant impact, how your actions and involvement can make a significant impact. And so thank you for for doing that, and we invite you to continue to do that. And as we continue our series, may we open our eyes to the realities of the world around us. May we embrace the joy of serving others. May we experience the abundant life Jesus promises And may this series continue to awaken our hearts and equip us to live out our faith in impactful ways. Well, today is Father's Day. And so as we continue this teaching series, we're going to do so by honoring the role, honoring and reflecting on the role of fathers, both our earthly fathers as well as our heavenly father. 
We're going to look at a passage found in Psalm 68 where we will explore the heart of our Heavenly Father who cares deeply for the fatherless and widows, which is fitting for our teaching series theme. We will see how God calls us to mirror his protective and providing nature in our lives. And as I mentioned moments ago at the conclusion of our gathering this morning, we are going to commission Pastor Seth and the Youth Ministry Camp Yukon Mission Trip Team, sending them off with our prayers and our support as they seek to fulfill the mission that God's called them to, to serve those less fortunate. But today we, we honor fathers. Today we, we celebrate fatherhood. We celebrate manhood. If you're here with us today and and you're a father, we wish you a happy Father's Day, but we extend that that greeting and that wish to all men. Whether you have children or not, we wish you a happy Father's Day. And we want to affirm and celebrate the role of the father. You know, it's it's interesting, and and I might have commented on this in the past, but increasingly we live during a time when fatherhood, maybe even manhood altogether, seems to be under attack. And, and that's not coincidental, because there, there is a spiritual attack that, that's being waged on the family in our world today. It's a spiritual attack. It's from the enemy. So we need, to, we need to recognize that and identify that. It's not, it's not other people. Scripture says our struggle is not against flesh and blood, so it's not other people. We love people. But the enemy wants to destroy the family unit which God has designed. And and quite often, the way that he does that is by attacking fatherhood and manhood. If you look at the media, if you look at the way fathers are portrayed in film, in TV shows, in commercials, there are usually a handful of tropes about fathers, and, and few of them are positive. There's usually uh, the, tr- the sort of the, the stereotype of the absentee father that gets portrayed in the media. And quite often, when the father is present in, in the family, whether it's in a TV show or in a commercial, the father is often the punchline of every joke. And even as I wear this Peppa Pig pin, the dad in Peppa Pig is the punchline of most jokes. And so we, we have to be wise about that because God's design for, for fathers and for fatherhood is that men would be the leaders of the family that God has called them to be. And so I want to affirm men today. I'm going a little off script when I do this, but it's on my heart today, and so I want to do this. I want to affirm men today on Father's Day, and I want to say this, and this, this might not be the most politically correct thing to say, but it's true, and, it, and it's from Scripture, and so I'm going to say this to you now, men. God made you a man, and it's good to be a man. Yeah, that's that's truth today. And I don't know if you needed to hear that, but it's true. God made you a man, and it's good to be a man. For the women, God made you a woman, and it's good to be a woman. That's true. But today is Father's Day, so we're honoring the men today. So that's why I'm emphasizing that. Men, God made you a man, and it's good to be a man. And so what I want to encourage you to do is this. As we go through this message, maybe reflect on this. We're we're not perfect men. We're we're flawed. Uh, we, we, We recognize that there are many times when we haven't measured up to the mark that that we would want. So we're not perfect men. Okay, there's one almost perfect man in the room. And, and afterwards, we're all going to talk to him and learn his secrets. <laughs> so we're not perfect men. We aspire to be godly men, and, and, and we hope to be godly men. But sometimes we're, we're not as godly as we would like to be. And so what I want to encourage us to be is that if nothing else, we would be God's man. Be God's man. Know that you belong to God and be God's man. And if, and if we can get that straight, everything else will come into line and come into order. Be God's man. So as we honor the, and reflect on the role of fathers today, I want us to open our hearts and minds to God's word and allow his spirit to move us into action and into deeper love. And so I invite you to turn with me now in your Bibles to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. 
where we read these words starting in verse 4. If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn there with me now. If you don't have your Bibles with you, we have the passage written right up here on the screen. As we read about the heart of compassion of our Heavenly Father. Verse 4. Sing to God. Sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Church, will you join me as we turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer this morning? God, on this Father's Day, It is our desire that we would seek your heart, that we would know the heart of God the Father. And as we honor men today, as we celebrate fatherhood, as we seek to continue to live out this mission of impacting this world with the truth of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ as your church, Lord, we pray especially for the men of our church today, for the men of your church, God, that you would allow us to be your men that we would be God's men. And Lord, that as we do that, and as, as we aspire to be God's men, that you would bring everything else into line and into order. Lord, that we would lead our homes, lead our families well, that we would honor and reflect you well. And we celebrate and thank you for fatherhood and for manhood today. We pray this in Jesus' name. And God's church said, amen. Well, as we see in this passage, we, we see the virtues which describe the heart of God. A father's heart embodies gentleness, kindness, nurturing, and perseverance. It never gives up on people. This is the heart of God the Father, which we are called to emulate. And what I shared moments ago is true. While all human parents have their flaws, I want to remind you today, church, that we are deeply loved and nurtured by our perfect Heavenly Father. As we experience his perfect love, we can strive to parent and mentor others following his divine example. Amen? And so we see a few things from our passage today. The first is this. As we aspire to be God's men, as we aspire to honor God, we recognize that our purpose above all else is to glorify God. That is why we exist. And so we exalt the Lord who sees the vulnerable. Verse 4 reads this, sing to God, sing in praise of his name, extol him who rides on the clouds, rejoice before him, his name is the Lord. This verse calls us to praise and exalt God, highlighting his majesty and sovereign presence. I think I've I've shared with you before an experience that, that I remember very, very vividly throughout all of my childhood, as speaking of my father which is that my, my dad was an early riser. He worked for the railroad, the railway his entire life. And so he was very, very, uh, you know, very intentional about uh, regimenting his hours and his day and that sort of thing. And so almost without fail, my dad would wake up at 5 a.m. Even, even after he retired, he would continue to wake up at 5 a.m. I think he's, you know, I don't know if he's watching right now. I, I love you, dad, if you're watching. I think he's kind of allowed a little bit of flexibility on that now, so I think he's probably getting up at around 6 or 7 a.m. now, which is still okay, it's still good. But, and, you know, all that is to say, my dad would wake up most of the time before anybody else in the house. And by the time uh, I would kind of make my way down the stairs, and especially into my teenage years, the, the time that I would make my way down the stairs in the mornings would get later and later. But routinely, when I would, when I would come into the kitchen in the morning, through all of my childhood and into my teenage years, I would always see my dad first thing in the morning, reading his Bible and praying. It was, it was what I would always see. And in doing that, he was exalting God. He was making it a point that the first thing that he would do was to allocate his time to God. And that was something that I witnessed as a child, and it's something that, that has remained with me. And so, to the fathers in the room, to be God's man, that's what you're called to be. You're God's man. You belong to God. You have been created to glorify God. That's that's the purpose of our existence. Every man, woman, and child, all of creation exists to glorify God. 
And as this verse says, we exalt the Lord. And so if you model that to your children, even if your children have grown up and left the home, if you continue to model that, that we exalt the Lord, then you are being the, the man of God that you are called to be. This verse calls us to highlight his majesty and his sovereign presence. And so we do that in our action. But we also see in these words uh, an indication of who God is. We also see in these words a reflection of God the Father's heart. God is depicted as riding through the clouds. There are different variations of this translation. This, this psalm is translated in different ways. Some, some refer to God riding through the clouds. Other refer to, others refer to God riding through the desert, the barren places. And in any, in any translation that you're reading from this psalm, this, this imagery indicates, it's a powerful indication of the majesty of God. He's riding through the clouds. But it's also an indication of his omnipresence, that God is everywhere. Perhaps more significantly, God is here. God is right here. It's an indication of God's ability to reach us wherever we may be. God encounters you wherever you may be. The Father's heart is to seek you out wherever you may be. Even as we sung that, that, that worship song about the reckless love of God, that he would leave the 99 to come after the one, God searches you out. God the Father seeks you out wherever you may be. That is the expression of his fatherly love for you. His name, Yahweh, signifies his eternal presence and faithfulness. God reveals himself through his name. When he appeared to Moses to liberate his people from slavery in Egypt, he gave his name and he said, I am who I am in the book of Exodus. Similarly, in this psalm, when we see the God who bears this name has a special concern for everyone, wherever they may be. Specific to the, this, this teaching series which we are in, focusing on the world, God has a, a compassion and a heart to reach the marginalized in our society. Those who have been forgotten, those who have been pushed away to the periphery, the fatherless, the widow. As we think about the fatherless child, we think about even as, as a church, as we have undertaken the chosen experience where we are now sponsoring a community effectively of children and of families in Guatemala, as we, as, we, as we visualize the fatherless child, we see one who often feels abandoned and unseen. God's promise, this is the fatherly heart of God, God's promise is that he encounters them in their places of desert, in their places of loneliness, in their places of greatest need. He rides on the clouds, but he is not distant. He is actively present, seeking out those who feel lost and alone. Now, as we aspire to be God's men, as we aspire to be God's church, we seek to imitate the heart of God the Father. And this assurance of God seeking out even the fatherless child should inspire us to lift our voices, to acknowledge God's relentless pursuit of the vulnerable, and to do likewise. One powerful way we can honor God the Father is by loving and serving those on the margins, the widows and the orphans. One way that we can do this and, and honor God the Father is by loving those who we might feel are the most unlike us, because God loves them too. They too are his image bearers, created in the image and likeness of God. And if God would relentlessly pursue them, shouldn't we do the same? the widows, the orphans, the lonely, the homeless, those in need around the world. This is a series where we're talking about the ways in which we as a church can engage in the mission of God in our world and to do so in tangible ways. One of the chief expressions of that has been the mission trips which we've been commissioning and the stories that, that, that have come out of those. And again, we look forward to hearing from Pastor Crystal when she comes and speaks to us next week. 
I'll be giving the sermon, but she's going to be coming and sharing some of the highlights of what she observed while she was in Guatemala. One of the things we want to do, church, is to be able to engage in mission trips regularly and make this something that is something that, that you can participate in in the days and, and years to come. Several years ago, I had the opportunity to go on a mission trip to Guatemala, uh, pardon me, to Colombia. You may recall uh, last summer, we had Darren McRae come and speak to us. Darren is a, a missionary in Colombia. Do you guys remember Darren came and spoke to us? We did a, a mission trip a few years ago. I did a mission trip with my previous church with Darren McRae to Colombia. And one of the highlights of that mission trip for me was working at a place called El Puente, which means the bridge. It's a children's center in one of the neighborhoods, very, very run-down neighborhood in Bogota, kind of on the, the, the banks of the river in a, in a forgotten part of town where the streets aren't paved. When I was working there, our team was able to lead a chapel. We were able to tutor children. The staff of El Puente have helped to educate and at times even re-educate children who have been left behind by the resource-strapped local school board. So one of the issues that El Puente encountered was that with, with all of these children, quite often families that came from very, very uh, impoverished means would not have a fixed address. And they would kind of move their way around some of these neighborhoods of Bogota, Colombia, and the school board had de determined its districts based on the geography of the city. And so uh, if, if a family had residence within a certain district, then the children would be enrolled in one of the schools in those districts. But for the families that were moving around based on where the dad could find work or where the family could find lodging and accommodation, where there was no fixed address, many of these students fell through the cracks of the uh, school board of the education system, and, and many of them were growing into their adolescent years and didn't have the ability to read because they had, been, uh, they had missed those opportunities based on their economic circumstances. This experience was uh, equally inspirational but also heartbreaking. And while on the one hand, many children received a second chance at education, I was also left with the sad realization that many other children would live their entire lives in these circumstances. And that's something that stays with you when you see that and you experience that. And I, This is part of the reason why I want us as a church to be able to engage in these sorts of mission trips because I think when we, when we see those circumstances firsthand, you develop a, a compassion and empathy for God's children around the world, which gives us a glimpse of the loving heart of Father God, the compassion that he has. And it was a reminder to me again of the privileges which we take for granted, but also of our requirement to show the love of Father God to those around the world in need. When we do so, we honor him, we glorify him, we exalt him. As we celebrate Father's Day, and, and, and please hear, hear me when I say this. We honor you, fathers. We honor men. We celebrate you. Let's also remember that our praises are a testimony to God's unwavering presence, who is the father to all who receive him. He sees every heartache. He steps into every desert. And our songs of praise become a beacon of hope for those who feel unseen, reminding them that they are not alone, but that God is always near. That is why we focus on the world. That is why we seek to be the hands and feet, going to the places, serving as God has called us to do. Secondly, church, in this passage, we see God as father and protector. Verse five says this, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. Here we see a profound declaration of God's character. He identifies himself as a father to the fatherless, and a protector of widows. This isn't simply a title. It's a promise of his direct involvement in the lives of the most vulnerable, in his holy habitation. He is actively working on behalf of those who have no one else. There are many amazing fathers in the world. 
And as we celebrate and affirm fathers and men today, I, I would say also there are many amazing fathers in this room right now. We celebrate you, we honor you, we affirm you. But it's also true that not everyone has had that same experience. There are many for whom the experience of fatherhood, either in terms of your childhood or maybe even in terms of the challenges that you might have faced as a father directly, that, that it's not always been a positive experience. It, it has not always been easy. Maybe you uh, found that, that your childhood did not have a positive experience with fatherhood, and, and likewise, we empathize today. Whatever your experience with fatherhood has been, It doesn't change the fact that God is our heavenly father. He wants us to see him as our loving heavenly father. Maybe you've you've wrestled with that. But may I encourage you today to look at this verse as a lifeline. God is the father to the fatherless, a defender of widows. God steps into that role, offering protection, provision, and love. To the men in the room as we aspire to be God's men. Again, to reference something my dad taught me, is there, there are three Ps that we seek to uphold as fathers and as men. And that is to preserve, protect, and provide. The three Ps, preserve, protect, provide. Something that we aspire to do as human fathers, but it's something that is modeled to us perfectly by our heavenly Father. This Sunday is Father's Day, and uh, in, in the lead up to Father's Day, uh, my daughter has been singing a song that she really, really loves called Good, Good Father. She uh, asks me to sing it every night before she goes to bed. She asks Annabelle to sing it too. Uh, it's one of her favorites. And for uh, many churches around North America, it's a, it's a kind of a staple that they sing on Father's Day. Uh, I think we sung it last, uh, last Father's Day, so we, we didn't need to sing it today. Um, but by the way, Jocelyn did an amazing job leading us in worship this morning, didn't she? Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you for serving us and for worshiping. And uh, great to see so many of this next generation stepping into that, that role of leadership. And, and really this current generation You're not the the church of tomorrow, you're the church of today, and we affirm that in terms of this uh, young adult generation. But as, just back to this song, Good, Good Father, and it it sings words that you're familiar with if you've sung the song before. But the other day, uh, my my daughter had requested this song. She said, Daddy, I wanna wanna listen to Good, Good Father. So I put Good, Good Father on, and she, she sung it, and she listened to it. And then when the song was over, she said to me, Daddy, why do we sing Good, Good Father? And that's a great question, isn't it? It's more than a catchy song. Uh, you know, I, I find children have a way of asking the, the questions that we might just sort of take for granted. And she said, why do we sing Good, Good Father? And, and I said to her, because that song is about God. And it's who God is. He is our Good, Good Father. And my daughter said, but you're my daddy. And I said, it's true. I am. I'm, I'm your earthly father, but he is our heavenly father. He's my father too. He is our good, good father. And she didn't say anything after that, so hopefully it was a good enough answer. <laughs> but we sing he is a good, good father because he is a good, good father. And, and again, I think at times, whether it was through uh, an experience which many have had, where unfortunately fatherhood has, has not been a positive experience. And again, if that's been the case for you, we, we empathize. Or maybe because of the ways in which society increasingly has placed fatherhood and manhood under attack. I, I, I think there are, there are times that we really need to remind ourselves the fact that our heavenly father is a good, good father. And he loves you. More than loving you, he actively likes you. He wants to be with you. He wants to know you. Most of all, he wants you to know him. He is a good, good father. This is a promise, church, that isn't abstract. It's a daily lived out reality for those who place their trust in him. 
God's holy habitation is not a far off place, but a present reality where he meets the deepest needs of his people. As a church, we're called to reflect this fatherly care. We must look out for those who are alone, ensuring they feel the protective and nurturing love of our Heavenly Father through our actions. Whether it's sponsoring a child, supporting those in need, maybe looking out for the single mothers, or simply being a friend, we can embody God's promise in tangible ways. And and I want to say this, even as I say those words, that if you find yourself in that place of need, we as a church want to be able to model the love of our Heavenly Father to you. The church is a place where we support one another. So if you do find yourself in that place of need, please do come let us know. And to the best of our abilities, we will serve you as God's church, seeking to reflect the love of our Heavenly Father. Finally, church, in our passage this morning, we see this. God's family is a home for the lonely. God's family is a home for the lonely. Verse six of our psalm says this, God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. These verses highlight God's heart for restoration. He settles the lonely in homes and leads prisoners to prosperity. God's desire is for everyone to experience the warmth and security of a loving community. That's what his church does. God's church is a family. He transforms loneliness into belonging and captivity into freedom. One of the priorities we've identified together as a church is that we would be a place which cultivates a culture of welcome. Or put more plainly, a church that feels like home. We welcome you home today. We want this to be a place that feels like home. Welcome home. And as we seek to aspire to to be a place where all can feel that sense of belonging, our prayer is that God would use our church to accomplish just that. May that be a desire that burns on our hearts. And so the invitation to you today, church, is this. Consider those who feel isolated, perhaps even within our own church, I get to look at the, the, the uh, participation numbers in our weekly gatherings. And statistically, we're still seeing numerically almost as many people who are joining us online as those who are worshiping with us in person. I think that worshiping in person is, is the best thing, and so I encourage you to continue to gather with us in person. We, we want you to be here with us in person. We also recognize that, that there are times when that's not possible, and so there are many, maybe even some who are watching right now, who are shut in, and it's not possible to come and gather in person. But we are with you, and we want to continue to support you. And so, church, we have to think about those who are not able to be with us in person, those who are isolated, they are still part of our church and we want to be able to serve them. And and so we seek to do that as a pastoral ministry team, but that's something that we all have to do. It's not something that simply falls on the shoulders of the pastoral ministry team. One of of my, my favorite things as a pastor is when I hear that a need has arisen and I reach out to that person who has that need and I find out that somebody from the church got to them before I did to meet that need. That's one of the most encouraging things that I experience as a pastor because we are God's church. This is a home for those, even those who are isolated. God's family is not simply just about physical homes but also about the spiritual and emotional connections that make a house a home. This church, as God's family, is meant to be a place where everyone finds their place, feels valued, and experiences the fullness of God's love. So on Father's Day, a message to the fathers, again, is to be God's men, but a message to all of us is to model the loving heart of God the Father and create space where all feel that sense of welcome. Welcome home. In a few moments, we're going to commission our youth ministry mission team to Camp Yukon. And as they go, they're going to participate in this heavenly mission that God's called them to. 
very, very briefly, for those who are not aware, Camp Yukon is, you know, as, as the name would imply, it's situated in Yukon territory. I shared last week that our youth ministry mission team is going to be flying into Whitehorse, and then they're going to drive a couple of hours, I think kind of southeast of Whitehorse. So they're coming actually closer back down towards the British Columbia border, and Camp Yukon is situated on a lake there. It's operated by our sister church in Whitehorse, and uh, the, the uh, Camp Yukon offers summer ministry youth camps to children and, and adolescents from throughout Yukon Territory and even into Northwest Territories, many of whom come from underprivileged circumstances, uh, many of whom face challenges in their home lives and in their family lives. And so for a period of 10 days, two weeks thereabouts, they get to come to this camp where they are nurtured, where they are ministered to, where they find that place of welcome and of home. And it is a life-changing experience. As we look at uh, the, the landscape of this young adult generation, the 18 to 35s, there are many from these generations who unfortunately have stepped away from uh, from their faith, have stepped away from participating in God's church. But the studies have shown that for those young people who do two things, participate in a Christian camp or go on a mission trip, the likelihood of them remaining faithful and remaining participating in church life increases exponentially. And this uh, Camp Yukon opportunity does both. It's both a mission trip and a camp experience. And so while our youth ministry mission team is going to serve the young people in Yukon and Northwest Territories, it's in fact something that's going to enrich their discipleship and their lives and have a, a lasting impact. And last year, our youth ministry mission team went and we heard back from them when they came back. They shared with us their stories. We're gonna do the same thing this year. We're gonna hear that the testimonies uh, that, that are going to come from this experience and they're going to be powerful testimonies of people experiencing the love of God the Father and of lives changed. And so as we commission this team, as we send them off, they're going to do what we've been talking about throughout this entire message. As we, as we reflect on what, the thing, what are the things that we can do as a church, how can we apply this to our lives? I have a, a few thoughts in terms of our points of application, and they're these. First is this, reflect God's heart. Actively seek ways to mentor and support the fatherless and vulnerable in our community. By doing so, we reflect God's protective and nurturing nature. And one of the ways that we do this in our church is through our next generation ministries, through our youth ministry, through our preteens ministry, our kids ministry. Another way that we do this through our church is through our child care. Here at Richmond Pentecostal Church, we operate the largest single-site child care in the city of Richmond. And there are so many powerful stories of children that are coming into our child care, and both the children and their families are encountering, first of all, the love of God's people, but subsequently the love of God and coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And so uh, please continue to pray for our ministries and also pray for our child care. Secondly, church, we can go where God sends us. Just as God encounters us in a wide variety of places, we should be willing to step into difficult and uncom uncomfortable places to offer our support and love to those in need. And finally, church, we create a home for the lonely. Embrace and include those who feel isolated, ensuring they experience the warmth and security of a loving church family. Support initiatives like the Youth Ministry Camp Yukon Mission Trip that aim to bring God's love to isolated communities. As we conclude today, I'm going to invite the worship team to come on up. Church, as we honor fathers, let's also reflect on the profound impact of supporting this next generation in mission work. When we invest in the next generation, we're not only fostering their spiritual growth, but also extending God's love to communities near and far. And so I'm going to invite as well the Camp Yukon Youth Ministry Mission Team to come on up. And it's no surprise, church, that the young people bring fresh energy, enthusiasm, and new perspectives to mission work. Come on over, guys. Guys and gals, come on right up to the front here. We want to honor you and commission you. As they do so, they reach hearts that may be closed to others. 
So here we have our Camp Yukon mission trip team. They're all wearing their Yukon hoodies as well. And uh, we're, we're commissioning them to go on this mission trip. Supporting our youth on missions empowers them to live out their life and live out their faith in tangible ways. It deepens their understanding of God's global church and it cultivates a lifelong commitment to service. It strengthens our church community as we unite in prayer, financial support, and mentorship, and it creates a ripple effect of blessing and growth. So today we have the opportunity to support and commission Pastor Seth and the Youth Ministry Camp Yukon Mission Trip team. So you ready to go, Pastor Seth? <laughs> can we actually, can you grab that mic down there? We want to commission you and, and send you as you go. And this, this team is an extension of this church. They are going to represent Richmond Pentecostal Church to the, this community in Yukon. And so uh, as you go, Pastor Seth, what are some things in particular that people here at RPC can be praying about and thinking about as we support you in prayer as you go on this mission? Mm. One of the, there's a few big things that we always look for a prayer for. First is prayer for not all, all these leaders who are sacrificing their time, but just that they'd be able to show the kids who are at the camp what the love of God is, what the love of Jesus is. And so the second half of that is these kids who are coming to this camp are all across north, north of Canada from Northwest Territories and all, everywhere up north, and they're coming from broken homes, homes where they don't know about Jesus or maybe their family isn't able to show them love like God would so we just want to pray for those kids as they go up to there too that they would just get to experience God in that moment as we all have the opportunity to be here and experience his love and his grace and be with each other they're not surrounded by people in their lives who can even tell them about God so that's why we go up there that's why we want to share the gospel tell them hey you have a heavenly father who loves you, who doesn't care what's happened to or how you've been in your past or what you're doing now, but he loves you and he wants you to be close to him. So those are the two biggest things I'd say pray for. for Amen. Me. So, uh, and you guys, when do you leave? We leave June 28th. And you come back? On July 7th. Okay, so from June 28th and July 7th, we want to be praying especially for our Camp Yukon mission trip team. Church, as you're able, I invite you to stand with me as we prepare to pray this prayer of commissioning for our team. And uh, they'll, you'll see them next Sunday as well. We're commissioning them this Sunday because next Sunday we're doing the reveal of our chosen experience. We wanted to really emphasize our Camp Yukon mission team today. But again, through that, the, the end of June and through that first week of July, we're really going to have them on our hearts and in our prayers. So extend your hand toward them now with me as we offer up the work that they are doing to the Lord. God, we lift up this team to you. Lord, as they go to serve and to be a demonstration of the love of God, in many instances, Lord, to those that have not experienced that kind of love before, we pray, Lord, that they would reflect you well, that they would serve you well, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would go before them and open hearts and minds and lives to receiving the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, that the lives of the young people that they will serve will be changed. Lord, that they will serve you and love you and follow after you each and every day of their lives. God, we pray that uh, in the days remaining, you would help this team, prepare them, protect them from any, any attempt, any attack of the enemy. Keep them safe, healthy, and well as they go uh, and, and protect them as they go, Lord. And may this be a life-changing opportunity for these team members. We thank you for them. We pray this in Jesus' name. And God's church said, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you're drawn closer to Jesus and that his love, his spirit, and his life are filling you right now. If you'd like to know more info about who we are and what we're doing at RPC, please head over to rpcchurch.ca to find out more. And if you like the podcast, you can subscribe. You can share it with your friends and family. You can click the share button, take a screenshot, and share it on your social stories, and tag us at RPC Church. And one more thing before you go. 
We just want to remind you that you are loved by Jesus. God bless you.